Hey, what's up, party people in the house? Brett Martineau here, of course, because this is my channel, so why would it be anyone else? Um, I uh, have obviously taken some time off from making YouTube videos, and uh, in that time, YouTube has done a great job of increasing or upgrading their software. Who knew? Um, so I'm excited to come back to this sweet little live stream setup that we've got going on here. Um, I actually went low on my phone the other day. Nobody watched it, so it's fine. I pulled it down, but I talked about something that I wanted to I wanted to kind of get into again because I didn't like the way that I'd said it. Um, and it has to do, you can probably tell from the title of this video that it's going to be fairly philosophical um, as per the huge. Um, but uh, I wanted to talk about it. It's this idea of ride the mean. Um, and I don't mean mean like the out of nice. I mean mean like the 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 middle number, the whichever numbers in the middle. So if you have two numbers, uh, or, or say three have three numbers, whichever numbers in the middle is the one that you're um, that you're looking for. And uh, and I it's interesting because the mean the mean a lot of times is something that we forget about and. Well, let me back up a little bit and kind of explain what I'm talking about here. I think I know that for myself, I have this tendency to swing really hard into new ideas. If you know me uh, from a business perspective, or if you know me from a personal perspective, you'll know I am the earliest of early adopters. I'm like the bleeding edge tech adopter person. If you saw what's in front of me on my desk, or even the way that this whole thing is set up, the fact that I own this microphone, I have no reason to own this microphone, except that I really like it. And I'm all into the that type of an idea. And um, and I just, I swing really, 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 really hard into those things. And sometimes, well, here's here's what happens. I apologize for that. What happens when you swing so hard into new ideas is you are there's no consistent base for who you for who kind of who you are and what your actual ideas are and sometimes what can happen is if you're public with the way with the swinging into these ideas sometimes it can seem like you're the person who today thinks this and then tomorrow is going to think this over here and then the next day is going to think this over here and then on on su Sunday or whatever the next day after that is, you're thinking way back over there, and there's no real consistency. And the problem with consistency has really nothing to do with your relationship with other people, and it doesn't really it doesn't really matter what people think of you. Um, but it's hard to take anyone seriously that where you can't put your finger on what they think or who they are. It's an unfortunate thing because I've and I've said this a, a bunch of times and I I I stand by it. Um, the idea that what other people think of you is less important than what you think of yourself. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, you should be more concerned with are you being true to who you are than whether somebody else accepts it, which I think is I think that's still true. But there's a caveat. And the caveat is it's something that we see in business all the time. And it's funny because business owners, the ones that I end up dealing with tend to fall into the same trap where they think, well, I have a good product and therefore people should buy it. But they don't understand that everything between having a good product and other people buying it is what is what comes up with those sales. Like mu the music industry is probably the best example of this. The, the most popular musicians are not the best musicians. That it's like a one to one ratio. It's like it, it's just because you are the most popular musician does not mean you are the most talented musician or that you write the best songs. And in fact, most of the time, it's the opposite. If you are a popular musician, you are not the best musician. You're not even that good. And those instances where you have a band or a musician or a group or a or something that is popular and is good. It has nothing to do with their music. Most of the time, they're going to be... I don't know why I keep getting these phone calls. Um, but it went to voicemail, so whatever. Um, most of the time, you're going to end up getting um, uh, business or attention 
not because of what you say, but because of how you say it. In fact, uh, just the other day, what was today? Today's Thursday, so Tuesday, two days ago, I was having lunch with some, some colleagues of mine, and we were talking about how business and marketing is like a symphony or an orchestra or a concert, a music concert, and how the different pieces of your marketing are like the different pieces, like components of a concert. You've got the music, you've got the performer, you've got the audience, and there was another one, but I don't remember what it was, but th that's enough to get the, the metaphor. Um, if the music is good, but the audience doesn't want to hear it, it's not going to work. If the music is good and the audience wants to hear it, but the musician can't perform it or is trying to perform it in a different way, it's not going to work. Like for example, say I go to a concert and the, the headliner of the concert is, let's say the New York symphony. Okay. And they're going to play, uh, Beethoven's fifth. Right, I'll just use a very easy example. So the New York Symphony is going to play Beethoven's Fifth. I show up and it's Slipknot. On Slipknot's the band. You may know they wear the masks. Slipknot is on the stage. They're performing Beethoven's Fifth. And they've re they've reworked the way that they're they're they look so that it's more symphonic, right? That's kind of what they've done. But it's not the New York Symphony, it's Slipknot. Now I might, I personally might enjoy that because I'm all about looking at things in different ways, but I would imagine that the bulk of the audience would not be excited about that. And I don't think that they would, that the, the result would be very good. Um, and the same thing, I think, you know, the other way, if people come looking for a Slipknot concert and they end up with the New York Symphony, no matter what they're playing, there's a disappointment there, which is going to lead to an, a not great situation. Um, and I think, the point that I'm making here, I'm going to circle this back around to my my point of ride the mean. The point that I'm making here is, um, if you are always, um, well, the point there is you need to. There needs to be some sort of a consistent thread in who you are. Otherwise, uh, the people you're trying to talk to can't. They'll lose interest. You you won't you won't be able to actually get anybody to pay attention because it's too difficult. And it requires too much work on their part to follow. Like if I think if today I'm really, really excited about, um, let's say if today I'm really excited about Belvita biscuits, okay, which I am, I'm always really excited about Belvita biscuits and I go hard into Belvita biscuits and I'm posting about Belvita and all the health benefits and everything's great about Belvita and yada, yada. And I spend two or three weeks just like hammering into the idea of Belvita and why this particular type of complex carbohydrate is best for your body because it gives you energy and blah, blah, blah. Then I go, then I go dark for a couple of weeks and then I come back and I'm like on a keto fix and I'm all about no carbs, only high fat, high protein. And then a couple of weeks later, I come back and I'm on a vegetarian kick, right? People are going to stop paying attention because there's, it's too hard for them to follow what is happening with me. And it might, it's not that what I'm experiencing isn't important or valid. It's not the fact, like the fact that I am really into Belvita and then I switch and I'm really into keto and then I switch and I'm really into vegetarian. That's not the problem. The problem is the way that I convey uh, who I am and, and what's important. Because the truth is who I am across all three of those experiences is somewhere in the middle. It's somewhere that combines the benefits of Belvita, the benefits of a keto diet, and the benefits of a vegetarian diet. So maybe high vegetable content, um, simp always stay with complex carbohydrates, and and increase the fat intake. Maybe maybe that's really where I'm at. But too often, I think in our in our and maybe this is it's just, I should probably say it this way. My experience for myself uh, has been I tend to lean so hard into new ideas. And forget that the result, the resulting attitude, the resulting uh, philosophy, the resulting whatever you want to call it, has really very little to do with Belvita and complex carbohydrates or with keto and no carbs. It has everything to do with finding my theory, my philosophy on nutrition, right? That's really what we're talking about. So it's not dive into Belvita and Belvita is all is really cool or dive into this other thing. Same thing. Like I see this all the time. Um, there's a lot of 
people over the last probably four years, there's a lot of people that I've met. So any that don't know, I used to be Mormon, um, pretty, pretty intensely and hardcore Mormon. Um, and when I, when I left the church, I had a massive amount of people, like friends of mine from, from, from high school and from earlier in life and everything that they all wanted to reach out and they all wanted me to take part in discussions of why the church was bad. Like a lot of them, a lot of them. <laughs> and it really surprised me how many people when they left the church had been so intensely supportive of everything the church was doing. And then as soon as they left, they swung all the way to the other side. I didn't feel, this is one instance where I think making a, a dramatic shift in my life philosophy, I didn't lean too hard into one or the other. And I think part of it is because, well, I think part of it was because I have, I have nine siblings that are still members of the church and I didn't want to offend anyone and, and their sensibilities. And I didn't, to be honest with you, I don't think, I don't have nothing against the church. I have nothing against Mormonism. I think it's great. In fact, you know, there's a lot about it that I miss. Um, but there's just some core fundamental, there's a core fundamental uh, connection to it that I just lack. I just don't have it. And I found that I, this is one of those instances where I found that it's not about what anybody else thinks about it. It's, it's the fact like me personally, not having that connection, I, I, I just got tired of trying to find it. Right. And there's obviously a lot more there. So that's not the point of this. So don't jump on that and come after me and, and, and et cetera. The point here is a lot of those people that leave the church, they, they swing the other way and then they just sort of lose steam. It's a political thing. Politics is, is a similar situation. A lot of times people will get so, in fact, I, the other day when I made the video, this the video talking about the same thing the other day, it was because I saw a bumper, a car that had probably seven or eight bumper stickers that was the same. It was the same bumper sticker. There was like eight of them. And I thought to myself, two, there's two options here. One, this person is very, very, very into politics and like very into politics and very into this very specific ideology or the more likely solution, which I think is what happens more often. They got really into one idea that happened to be conveyed very well by this one political ideology, whether it's a person or a political party or a, or a political support group, you know, like a campus Republicans kind of thing, um, or campus, campus Democrats or whatever. Um, they got really swept up in an idea that was conveyed, took a bunch of bumper stickers or bought a bunch of bumper stickers, put them on their car, felt really, really, really good and then got back to their life and haven't thought about it. And the interesting thing is getting a bumper sticker on your car is kind of like getting a tattoo. Like you don't, without the painful and expensive process of getting it removed, it's not quite as painful or expensive to get a bumper sticker removed. But the idea is you are imprinting a moment on yourself and on, or on your car or, you know, you're imprinting the, the emotions of a particular moment. And if those emotions are, are way are outliers from a statistical perspective, meaning most of the time you're between these two, uh, most of the time you think between these two boundaries, but then you have this emotion that's over here and you get a tattoo of that. When you come back to your normal, your everyday, this is my philosophy, this is where I sit, that seems weird. It seems like that's, I think a lot, that's a lot of where the regret around tattoos comes in. Because you're, you're, you're imprinting and, and solidifying and e eternalizing, immortalizing, for lack of a better term, a moment that falls outside of your standard thoughts. Now, again, the important thing is that it's not that you can't have those thoughts. Because sometimes this is where you think you're between here. You have this experience which drives you just way outside your comfort zone, way outside your normal uh, the way you think, whether you're high or drunk or whatever it is that causes you to go out there or just, you know, on a, on a, an emotional high, whatever, what that can do is, is one of two things. It can either expand 
what you think, usually not all the way to where you just were, but it can expand the way that you think about things, or it can actually cause you to shift the other direction. So now you're over here, but this is truth. This is what you actually think in between these two. I don't know why this visualization makes sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you, but you, you operate in between these two pillars. We'll say you have an experience that takes you up over here. Let's say up in, in this corner up here, right? So now what happens is because of that experience, you're either going to start to say, oh, you know what? I kind of was limiting in the way that my beliefs worked. I actually can, I feel like I can accept this. So now you operate in this circle, which is kind of expanded because of the average, because this is now included, but you're not necessarily going to go like this. I don't think that really happens. I don't think you go from, this is my ideology here in, in this little circle immediately to now I accept everything. I think it's like small increments and it has to do with, did you swing far enough outside of your comfort zone morally and uh, not morally, philosophically speaking, um, when I say morally, it's more like my, what I consider to be moral has expanded or contracted, right? So it's more of a philosophical question. So here's my, uh, maybe it's ideologically, maybe that's the word that we should use. So my ideology expanded because I had this experience that caused me to broaden my horizons, right? That's what that term means. Broadening your horizons means seeing more, accepting more. <laughs> I keep, <laughs> I keep trying to find whether it makes more sense for me to try and reach forward and explain this. There we go. Look at that. Look at my hands. Maybe my face will go focus. Boom. Um, so here's what I mean by ride the mean. And I'm pointing here because I have, I don't actually have it written down here, but I do have a word Dow written down, which I'll point out. Um, this whole idea of ride the mean is when you express yourself, this is a, this is how to market yourself as a person. 101. Okay. When you express yourself, if you find yourself always expressing thoughts and feelings that are outside what I'm going to call the mean, when I say the mean, I'm referring to everything inside the circle or in between the two pillars, right? The mean is like the average. I don't, that's not, it's not mathematically correct, but that's, that's what we're looking for. It's everything that's in here. If you are expressing yourself in the moments where you find yourself outside the mean, the expression of, of self will never match up with the true self. And so let that sink in for just a second. I want to, I want to lean into this a little bit just because I want to make sure you understand this. If the, ex, if you, the way you express yourself and if the, the moments in which you express yourself are always outside of the mean which again is the average of all of your thoughts and what you actually consider to be your ideology or your whatever. Um, you are never going to be able, you are never going to express you. You're going to express the outlier thoughts and, and the, the perception of you by those around you is going to be one of scatterbrained and sc so it's a uh, scatter scattered unorganized, disorganized, uh, and what's the other word I'm looking for? Um, inconsistent. And that's the key term right there, inconsistent. Because again, here's my boundaries. And this is where I, this is what I actually think. This is what I actually believe. These are what my idea, my I, uh, ideals are, my ideological center, right? The mean is within these ramifications here. Um, ramifications is not the right word. Side note, uh, in Russian, the, the term for boundaries is ramki. So every time I think boundary and I say ramification, I actually mean boundary and not ramification. Anyway, side note, and I digress. When your thoughts are outside, here's where you're thinking. Let's use, this will be a little easier. I'll use my face. My face represents the mean. Okay, so where my hands go is outside. Just like I said at the beginning, if I express this thought because I experience this emotion out here that isn't actually part of my ideological center, my mean. And then I express this one over here. And then I express this one over here. And then this one over here, there's no consistency there, right? Because there's no overlap between those, those ideologies. However, if you have this experience 
and then shut your mouth and wait for your ideals to expand a little bit or contract depending on what happens in the situation. It doesn't matter. Let your ideals contract. Then have this experience and then they expand or contract. Then have this experience and then they expand or contract. Now, when you start to express yourself from the mean, the mean will shift here or here or here or here, but it was not going to shift like this, right? So when you express yourself, there's going to be a common thread, which is all the stuff that stays, all the stuff that stays within the mean is going to be the common thread. And the important thing here is that in order for people to follow you, there has to be a common thread. There has to be some sort of consistency. And so the whole reason I say this and the whole reason I think it's important, and this is something that I work on, uh, this is like a, a, an actual thing that I tell myself every day, every time I have this experience where I'm like, oh, that's really, really, really cool. I never thought about it that way. I have to think to myself, okay, how does, what is that actually doing to the way that I think? Do I just think that it's cool, but it's, but I don't actually believe it? Do I actually believe it? Or am I allowing this to expand my beliefs? Right? Most of the time for me, it's I'm allowing this to expand my beliefs. Like I'm actually one of those people that incrementally, a little bit of time, my beliefs have become this. So it's like, it's hard, especially when you get your, your, your mean to be this big, because then again, you find yourself <laughs> expressing emotions that are all over the place. But again, from a marketing perspective, and, and my experience with the last 15 years in marketing is, again, to go back to the like a product example, if people are, if you're trying to sell a product and you don't have a consistent marketing message, then it's like, if you don't hit somebody when they're having the same emotion, you're not gonna connect with them. And if you're the, the thinner and the more specific your emotion that you're trying to express is, then the less likely you are to hit somebody when they have that same emotional experience, right? Whereas if you find the mean and operate publicly from the mean, you have a much better chance of finding overlap with other people, right? And so I think the point here, if I can give advice, not that I'm qualified at all, but to give advice is experience everything. I, my, I think everybody should experience everything. No, uh, with, with as little exception as possible, experience as much as you can, right? With maybe the exception of experience what it feels like to murder someone, right? That you probably don't need to know what that feels like. And you can set your own boundaries if you want, but try and push yourself to experience more than you even think that you were capable of because you never know what your mean actually will end up being until you've experienced everything outside of it in order to really create that mean. Like you have to experience sushi to know whether you like fish, right? You have to experience a bison burger to know if you really like burgers, right? Because you have to expand your horizons to the point of having experienced all of those things in order to have a mean that actually makes sense, right? So I think that's the key. Experience everything, but when you communicate to yourself and to other people, your ideology, ride the mean. Don't let those, those emotional cathartic outliers, that's what I'm going to call them. Don't let the cathartic outliers be the community, the, what you communicate. Let the cathartic outliers dictate what your mean is and then communicate from the mean. I don't know if I did even a half good job of explaining that. But either way, you should do it. Hit me up in the comments below if you have thoughts or if you're confused or if you think that I am crazy or if you think I'm not crazy or for any other reason. Hit me up in the comments if you happen to be seeing this part of the video because if so, it means you've been watching for 25 minutes. And I applaud you. Well done. Peace.